what's this room? Oh, this is that room, yeah, with the maze. Alright. Uh, you have to do a little bit of clever bomb maneuvering in this room, but it's really nothing that bad. Not for this one. This one you can just... Oh, well, there goes me pressing the A button when I'm not supposed to again. Like when I tried to use the A button to use the Deku Leaf. Man, that was retarded. What? <laughs> I, I, I don't think I hit that thing. I don't care what anyone says, I didn't. Yeah, so this is basically just a loop around to get a key right now. It's pretty much that simple. You know, they always do that workaround. That classic workaround. Alright. But to get the key, since that wasn't the key, that was the compass. And you can see that on the map there's another chest. You have to kind of do this to open the way further. And it can be a little bit hard to tell if you actually open that or not. Thankfully, the vines don't actually block the bomb shot, so you don't have to worry about throwing it at the exact right moment to avoid the vines or anything. Do I, like, forget how to go through this? Apparently... Okay. Dude, it looks like there's gaps there. I must be going crazy. Alright. I used to have this, map, this like, maze memorized, but apparently not anymore. Yeah, you work around this tree. I remember that. I knew it was a spot where you, like, had to work around a tree. And then you should go up here. <laughs> okay, apparently not. Dude. Oh my god, you are not... Could you hit any more of those, please? You are totally so... <laughs> Did you hear that little thud sound as I hit those things with my sword? That's funny. These things are always the scariest thing, because they're like... You'll never be able to kill these things. No matter what you get in the game, you can't kill them, so... They're just the most menacing thing. Knowing that you can... Knowing that they can hurt you, but you can't do anything to them. I almost want to th think that there's like a creature beneath this place and all of those things are like its arms or something. But that's a little bit scary to think of. That's like Tentalus except the plant monster. You know, like the Bio Leviathan or something. Tentalus. One of these pots should have a joy pendant in it. If that's the sort of thing that interests you, yeah, there you go. I'm not sure what that pot has in it, but I don't think it's anything that's really, uh... Deserves my attention right now. Probably just rupees or something. Knowing these games, I tell ya. Alright. Oh man, you guys weren't here before. You just congregated around here. Congregated around the regions of my wood. Alright, yeah, get your faces out of here. Uh, what is today? Today is March 27th. March 27th. 27th is a weird number. You, like, never see it that often, despite how, like, important it is, or seems to be in math, because it's, like, it's, like, 9 times 3, or 3 cubed, which you think would be, like, an important number, because, like, 3 to the power of 3, that's all 3 right there. But you never really see it that much, like, anywhere else. And it's half of 54, and 54 is a pretty crucial number, too. All right. In case anyone was ever, ever wondering, huh, thanks P-Hat, you lured me into hitting that switch. Neato. In case anyone was ever wondering, you can't, like, continuously grapple the P-Hats or the Bokoblins or anything to get their spoils. You have to, like, leave the room and come back in order for their, uh, thing to respawn. You know, I'm gonna make this thing go away, just for old time's sake. Oh, no, wait, I can't hit that one. Oh, hello. Are you the same one? Oh, you're not. Okay. Good to know. Alright, oh, this room. Oh, wait, this guy, oh god. Okay, get this guy out of here first, because he will be a pain in the ass if you don't. Trust me, he, like, char he charges you at the most random times. It's so scary. Freaking Mothula. Mothula minus the wings. Man, that guy looked like my dog for a second. Just the way the camera angle was situated at him. I don't know. Right, no, get out of here. I don't want to. I'm not done with this yet. Well, maybe I am. I don't know. Can't remember how much there is on this lower floor. And uh, you can hit these if you want to. Wait, I'm pretty sure you can, anyways. Yeah. Well, dude. Okay, I guess you can't. I guess my memory's a bit hazy on that. There is another way to knock those down later on, though. As if it's not obvious enough by the way they're just hanging there. Whoa. Did he just run away when I tried to grapple him? I don't think I've ever seen that. That's kind of neat. We'll just get out of here regardless. You showed me your one and only trick, and now it's time for you to die. 
Actually, he's too far away, so I'm not going to bother killing him. You I might kill, though. Because, oh my god, I hit both of them with once. Oh, they both, and they both fell. How convenient is that? Alright. I think you can actually kill them with the grappling hook, like, if they're in this dazed state. I don't know about that, though. And you can also see up there, over there, that there's a, there's a little bit of a grappling thing, so... We're gonna have to deal with that before we head through this door. This is a thing that a lot of people seem to miss on their first run through. I'm not totally sure why. I guess it is a little bit obtuse as to what you're supposed to do. Because, like, you're not really supposed to think to use the grappling hook in this area, I guess. Because, like, the grappling hook's all steampunk and you're, uh... You're in, like, a totally natural area. It's like two complete contrasts. Get out of here! Oh my god, this guy just won't leave me alone! He has no one to quit. Your time is up. That was supposed to be really epic. Oh well. And up here, if it suits your fancy, this is a joy pendant. Nice. I actually thought it was a treasure chart. I kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed about that now, because you really don't need to go out of your way for joy pendant chests. Oh man, I tried to use the Deku Leaf as I landed on that thing, and he just kept rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah, you can see the link like looks up there too, so you can see that there's things up there. But without further ado, let's head through the door and uh are we going outside now? I don't know, it turned all white, so it was a little bit scary. That's what happens when you go outside. Hmm? Oh my god! <laughs> That's the most hilarious angle ever on Mothula right there. Is that stupid shot of Okay, he's gonna come at me again. Oh Yeah. It was that stupid shot of him, like, uh, as, I don't know, it was a perfectly almost 45 degree angle, like maybe a 44 degree angle or something, and he was just going perfectly straight. His wings and his back were all, were both perfectly straight. It was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so basically what I like to do with this guy is kind of just, uh, I generally like to use my shield to block his attacks when he charges. You can't block that, obviously, but... And then just kind of deal out your massive damage to him. He's really nothing that bad. He kind of just keeps his, uh, holds his own ground. He can be a little bit worse than that, like if he charges at you, then, uh, if he charges at you, you can actually parry him if you want to. But as you saw before, you can also intercept him. You know, use your Predorite sword swing to interrupt his imperfect charge. If anyone knows what I'm talking about there, you're amazing. Anyways... We got a spiky chest, and I wonder why it's gonna be. I'm so off key with the music, and it's over. And you got the boomerang, one of the coolest designs for a boomerang in any Zelda game, in my opinion. And if you don't know how a boomerang works, well, uh, I'm sorry, you can read that text if you want. But basically, the way this works is that, um,. You can actually target five things with this boomerang. I don't know, they always seem to change the boomerang in the game, so. You can target up to five things, and it's really easy, so... There you go. And now with this, there's a whole plethora of, like, different puzzles that we can do now. Like, out of all the items in the game, you might use the boomerang the most. I'm not totally sure. There's there's one item later on that uh, kind of rivals it. And there's also all, a lot of the enemies in this dungeon, too. This is actually really cool. They kind of... I know it's like they, they do this with every dungeon in Zelda games. Like, they work the... the the dungeon around the dungeon item, but it seems to do it more so with this dungeon to me. I don't know why, because it's like you're always passing, on the way to the boomerang, you're passing a bunch of stuff that you could use the boomerang to kill, like up the enemies and the stuff. Like there's some, a bunch of strategies that you can use now with the boomerang. Oh, that would have been awesome if that hit him. So that's just a really cool thing in my opinion. In my humble opinion, oh look at this. <laughs> yeah, so you know how before I was trying to jump attack these nuts? Well. Now you can just do this. Boom, man. And something that's really nifty about this boomerang, too, is that... Or I guess about any boomerang. Is that, um, sometimes it hits things that you don't target as it works its way back to you or around to other items that you have targeted. So that's a little bit nifty. And once you've cleared everything out of the way and you feel safe, uh, just go ahead and cross. Actually, what... Is there anything down there? Uh, oh, that's that room. Okay, that's the room with, like, the pee hat and the water and the platform and it's all funky. And Joy Pendant? Called it. I guess you will need quite a few of these throughout the game, so... Never pass one up, even though I said that Joy Pendant chests were redundant. I might have lied a bit. 
Alright. And we're back in the hub room, except we're on an upper level now. The most uppity level of all, in fact. So if you head out here, don't make the mistake of, like, trying to hit the... Or trying to, like, jump down from there without the Deku Leaf. Like, it looks like you can make it, and maybe you can. But I swear, like, I've tried that a few times, and I always end up missing. And when you miss, you have to work your way back around to the top to get up there and smash through that. Yeah, so say goodbye to the cushiness of that platform. It's all gone now. Alright. This is a neat little platform over here. They have a bunch of these just, like, little platforms off to the sides. That really don't serve much of a purpose. Well, one of them serves a purpose, and we'll go over that in a little bit. Alright, this is the room I was thinking of with, uh, these morths. That's not what they're called, is it? Damn, I knew they're- I know the name by the top. It, I think it is morth. I don't know, that seems like a person's name or something. Or like a goblin's name. Yeah, but this is the one I like to use the Deku Leaf on. Just because they all blow away like that is so fun. And then they all just tumble down. Falling down like... Like leaves, as a matter of fact. Alright, yeah. They do kind of scatter, though, so you're more bound to get hit by them this way. Or more bo ma more uh, likely to get hit by them more frequently. Because if you just left them as they were, then when you jumped to the platform, they would have all stuck to you, like, all at once, and you could just eliminate them all at once there. But still, this is fun to experiment with the different items. You know, like, just go nuts with this. Just use all the items that you want. Okay. These arms, by the way, these, like, weird purple arms, um, they don't drop anything. And they infinitely respawn, and they're really scary. They look like Zerg's hands. And, uh, what they do is they actually sap your magic power. So don't stand too close like close to them for too long or don't let them hold you for too long because I'll show you like your magic thing beeps up there and it goes uh your magic slowly depletes they're really not that bad because they're so easy to take out that just one sword swipe will do all right before cutting that down go ahead and do this mm, yellow rupee same color as my hair all right actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take out my sword first and then I'm gonna come over here and spin attack. Nice. And yeah, I remember that guy. That guy always tries to get a sucker punch in on you because he won't be looking at him, or you might not be looking at him when you come down here. And he like shoots a shot off really, really freaking fast. So just be sure to do that. Oh. This is really elementary here. And this room actually is a little bit more uh, significant for something. Is this room actually? Yes, this is. Okay. So you see this platform over here and you're like, oh, well, this isn't really significant. And in general terms, no, this isn't really significant at all. But uh, there is one thing you can do if you want to whip out your tingle tuner, actually. I'm sure you can see where this is going already. I'm, I'm actually going to kill these guys first. I don't want you guys messing with my statue getage. Oh my god, hello. You're cute. They make cute little sounds. I kind of feel bad for killing them. And yes, those are technically like the same enemies as the big fat things in Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Even though they're so much smaller. Alright, let's get my Tingle Tuner set up here and everything. And I want to call Tingle. Most certainly. 